What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. It's your boy, D-Friend. Number 59 of the D-Friend show is about to begin right now. So you already know, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel right now. Hit that subscribe button uh, and hit the bell as well so you get notified. Also, you can follow me on all my social media so you know every single time that I go post or whatever, my life, whatever. Just go follow me on social media over there. So as you can see, new setup going on. I, I picked, a, picked a corner of the home and I just decided to move uh, over there. So that's what I'm doing. So we got a lot of things to get into today. Also, my bad. Make sure you go follow on Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes to listen to the audio versions only of the show. So I haven't been on the podcast in a minute, right? So last thing I did, I did a couple of videos referring to the academics Freddie Gibbs drama that happened when Freddie Gibbs claimed that he would uh, he could have smoked academics when he was out in L.A., but he didn't. And I was did a video about that. I spoke about how I thought that was it's corny. Like, you're, you're a grown man. Like, to, to say I, I could have smoked somebody, I could have killed him. Like, obviously, you're doing that for internet, you know, attention, right? And I got some pushback on that video. I also got a lot of people that agree with me, but I also got some pushback. And as you know, we always tend to lean into the pushback. We never really lean into the praise. So I, I do try to be more cognizant of that when people either – not even just say openly agree with me, but like, hey, I appreciate the content, great respect. I, I'm trying to be more cognizant of responding to those comments rather than responding to the negative ones. But let's be honest, it's just a human emotion to go against a negative comment. So I'm going to speak about something from that video and also the Colin Kaepernick video I did where he uh, kind of compared the NFL draft process to slavery. And people were like, well, there are actually really similarities between the two if you really look at them because this and that's like, it's all dumb shit. But we also have other things to get into. So we have the Brittany Renner situation, right? Brittany Renner went on the Academics Podcast, and the shit went viral because Brittany Renner is not on the good side of the internet. Nobody's really heard her speak about her situation until now. So those clips went viral. We're going to speak about those. We're going to discuss uh, my opinion on her, her situation with her baby daddy, all that good shit like that. We're also going to speak about the Breakfast Club interview with T.S. Madison, transgender woman, who has her own long history of whatever on the internet. She's been around since Vine uh, and her comments on Boosie and Lil Nas X. Also, the baby, oh, thank Lord, has finally been forgiven and has gained approval for going on festivals by, not the whole LGBTQ as a whole, that's, as articles say, but an organization from the LGBTQ community has spoken up for him. So uh, the first thing I get to is the comments, right? I wish I, I wish I'd have had the comments pulled up so I could do my D friends daily comment review. I usually, you know, D friends daily comment review. You know how we do. If you want to be in the video, just comment down below on any of the videos, um, the full podcast or even the clips. If something jumps at me, I will pull it up and we will discuss it before we get into the next day's show. So this one, it, it, it kind of triggered me. It was about the academics one because people say shit like this all the time. Right. I just want to tell creators out there, people who make videos about whatever, people who are trying to get into the creator space, whatever niche you do, just know that at, obviously at the point when you get to start, you're not going to be the biggest. You're not going to be the best. And when people get on your videos who don't know you and you're doing a certain, they will compare you to everybody else that is bigger to you. I get this all the time. Everybody, oh, you want to be academics. Oh, you want to be academics because I'm in this space of commentary, only me, one person, nobody else. So that's what they're going to do, right? And my show does talk about hip hop things, but I also talk about a plethora of other things if you watch my show as well. So this guy, um, he had this to say in the comment section. He said, let me see the ones I responded to. His name is Eddie Muchimo. He said, the fact that people hold an opinion like this dude and act and consider themselves a part of hip hop just shows how whack the culture has become. If you look at my set, obviously you see rappers on my set, right? You see Kendrick, he's a goat. Uh, recipes, Biggie, Recipes, Nipsey. They're goats. Uh, music and Nipsey is like goat. I wouldn't say Nipsey's goat of music. His last album was great, but he's just goat example that people should, uh, for entrepreneurship, right? And obviously Drake, that's my favorite. Artist, Recipe Smack Miller. Uh, I even got, where I got? I even got Rihanna right here and my other favorite artist, Rick Ross at the bottom. So obviously there's hip hop elements to the show. I speak about things like that. But to say that the totality of what I want to be is like, I I want to be a part of hip hop. Yeah, I probably would want to interview people in hip hop, but I also want to interview people in a plethora of other spectrums of life as well. I'm interested in a plethora of different things. I'm excited this weekend. UFC's going on. 
Kobe Covington, Kamara Usman, like people are multi-dimensional. I know if you see me speak about one topic, you think that that's what I want to be, obviously. But if you watch this channel, you know this is not all about hip hop. Look at the plethora of, of books I have here, right? Look at the different ideals that are on this thing because I like to open my mind and see other people's perspective. I have T.D. Jakes, Rick Ross, Emmanuel Archer. This is a great book, actually. And actually, these are two really great books. I, I haven't finished this book yet, but it's pretty good by T.D. Jakes. But this Rick Ross, Perfect Day to Boss Up, I read this in like a day and a half. That's how good it was. Manny Archer's book, Uncomfortable Conversation with a Black Man. Uh, this is like Rush Limbaugh's documentary. Like I said, I always bring up Rush Limbaugh, not because I agree with his ideals. I just, in this space of podcasts, and this isn't obviously a radio show, just see someone be able to garner audience. You got to really learn from the people that came before you, not to say you use their same tactics, not to say you rush their beliefs, but just kind of like studying up on people who've done it before you. Um, and it's really, it's pretty interesting book as well. When you talk about like getting the radio market, but anyways, state of emergency by Tamika Mallory and then Kenneth Owens Two clearly polar opposites. We got Tamika Mallory and we got Kenneth Owens. So, you know, on this show, I'm a plethora of different ideas. I literally had a conversation with a guy who was speaking to me about why he's homo homophobic. I didn't berate him. I didn't belittle him. I don't agree with him, but that's what this channel is all about. I'm not here to agree with the masses on every single topic, every single situation. So when I see shit like that, no, that's not what I'm trying to be. But just like for creators out there, they will compare you to whoever is at the top of your field. If I start doing interviews, they're going to say, oh, you want to be academics or, oh, I'm not academics, uh, even though he's doing interviews with his podcast. But, oh, he wants to be No Jumper. Oh, he wants to be DJ Vlad. Oh, this nigga think he's Charlamagne. Like, they're going to do that. You know they're going to do that until, until you reach a level of success that's comfortable to them to accept you. Because you know how people always say they, they, they watch somebody and they'll be like, oh, I didn't really like you at first, but now I like you. You know why they say that most times? It's because everybody else isn't running around the wagon to come to clamor at you, right? So when you're a smaller channel and you're not as big as all these other people, people will act like they don't like you just because you're smaller. Oh, you're a small channel. Who gives a fuck about your opinion? Like my, my, my opinion now isn't valid because I have 6,900 subscribers, right? It's not valid. But me as a personality will not change from the time I get to 6,000 to the time I get to a million. I'll be the same personality from here to there. But you know what's changed? People, the eyes have changed. So now my opinion is only validated by the amount of people that watch, stream the show. So just like, like I, I watch um, uh, my guy Hey Archer, right? Hey Archer does a live stream on Thursdays and he also puts out uh, I've seen from what I, I'm not gonna act like I'm hey Archer I'm not trying to act like I'm an avid listener but I mean or a viewer but I have watched some of your stuff you do reviews you have your nerd affiliated uh, thing as well where you do toy hunting you do like it's like more like the I want to box you in but you know it's like a comic book anime things of that nature that you discuss and talk about so whoever would be in his field that's the biggest at that I'm sure maybe not because it's less um, maybe not giving like really rash or harsh or controversial opinions depending on what it is. People will say, oh, you're trying to be like X, Y, and Z. I don't know who's at the top of those fields, right? But you're trying to be like that person. So just for creators out there, just take it. Like, people are going to do it. They're going to say it. They're going to say you want to be like whatever and be like, okay, sure. Eventually, I'll get to that to that point. Eventually, I'll get to that size. And they'll start telling people that's smaller than me, oh, you want to be like D-Friend. They probably don't. They're just doing their own shit. So there was that. Uh, then with the Colin Kaepernick shit. I said in the video, like, I know y'all are going to try to nitpick what I'm saying here. Because the video of Colin Kaepernick was uh, a video of NFL players being measured by their hands, combine shit, right? How big are your hands? How tall are you? Uh, how fast do you run? Like, we're just trying to get a good clear on our investment that we're about to make, right? So then as they're walking off the stage, they're walking past Colin Kaepernick, they turn into actual slaves from the early days of slavery in America. And I thought that was disgusting, trying to equate these two things. I always think that's nasty. The same way certain people try to equate something to, to Germany when it's nothing like Germany. Like when you say that Trump is Hitler, right? And this isn't as wild as the slavery thing to me, but it's still stupid. When you say Trump is Hitler, historically you really diminish what an evil person Hitler was right if you try to say they have similarities they were able to grow a wild crazy fan base but to compare somebody to something that was so egregious so evil to me is wild because especially when you leave it in the slavery thing right someone sent me a video they were like look at this video it's a guy who was talking about you know how NFL trades people the same way slaves get traded but you know let's put this into context 
if what happened recently, right? Um, what's his name? God damn, his aunt was one of my teachers. The guy who just got traded, Von Miller, just got traded to the Rams, right? So in people's mind, that would be the same thing as Chicken George, if you watch Roots. Chicken George being traded to that guy in England because he lost the chicken fight. So those are the same thing. Not knowing that Von Miller's going to L.A. to live a lavish lifestyle, play the sport he loves to do, get paid $9.7 million. Also, if he wants to, he can bring his family over there with him and quit at any time and go enjoy the rest of his life because I'm sure he's made millions of dollars. While, as if you've seen Roots, Chicken George gets sent over to England. Comes back, what, like 20 years later, 30 years later, comes back to the same plantation he used to work at, finds everybody's dead or gone, and he missed out on his entire life with his family. Like, we're really comparing those. I think that's nasty. Even if you could find, like, oh, well, yeah, they used to look at slaves. They used to measure them. Like, oh, he's big. He can work in the field. Or, oh, he's big. He could be a lineman. Like, to try to compare those two, I think that's idiotic. I think that's stupid. But he did it in his uh, in his special. So, I mean, if you, like, people just want to make a point. Like, one guy, I don't even know if these people are avid listeners. They're not trying to be trolls, but, like, I can still combat ideas and opinions. So, if, you, if you're watching this and you think I'm, like, being, like, nasty or whatever, I'm not. I'm just, like combating your opinion one guy was trying to bring up he said well it is similar because all the white people are the owners and they take majority of the money and you know all the players get the the scraps or they get the less of it in comparison that's still not the same as slavery slaves don't get profits from being a slave they get what, 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 what one one policy other well they got housing and like like come on let's stop it. like i said let's, like von miller will go to practice, get $10 million a year, go back to his mansion, go on vacation, do what he wants to do, and then report to work the next day. Just like any other American or anybody who works for a corporation anywhere will do. So essentially we're all slaves. But then I said that he broke it up. Well, no, only industries that are white-owned and have a majority um, black workforce. That's Those are the slaves. But like I said, people want to nitpick arguments and shit like that and bring up points that really don't fucking matter. I thought it was nasty. It's the same way I feel like people should feel the same way about this, but I don't really see the pushback on it. I mean, only on like the conservative side, obviously, because they hate Colin Kaepernick. But I don't hate it on a, he was Black Lives Matter, he was kneeling, I don't care about that shit. I'm just on a, a disrespect to the slaves. That's where I'm like, that, that's a disrespect to history. Because if kids are watching that documentary and they're saying, oh, going to the NFL is like being a slave? Well, then what was the really the problem? Like, everybody's so worried about critical race theory and shit like that. Oh, they're going to not teach them. You think that's better to teach, to make kids think that, you know, uh, being a slave was the same thing as being Lamar Jackson? Like, come on. Maybe I'm, think, maybe I'm thinking about it too much. Maybe I'm going to get into it too deep. But, like, let's be honest. Let's be honest. So, anyways, let's get to the stories for the day. And the first one I want to get into is Brittany Renner. So Brittany Renner's obviously gotten a lot of flack over the past couple of months due to her uh, breakup with PJ Washington. I don't know what he is, small for, power for, something for the Charlotte Hornets. He was tweeting stuff like, she won't let me see my kid. You weren't this person that you said you were. You know, real, like, you know, emotional guy shit after breakups, right? So obviously – um, that sent the end into a frenzy. Everybody was, she's a predator. She's a bad lady. She set him up. She been playing this from the beginning. And then narrative started running wild that people were running with. Oh, they were married. They weren't even married. I think they may have been engaged, but they weren't married. Oh, oh he's got to pay $200,000 a month in child support. Like people think, think, please think, think for yourself. Please think, think, please. I know he's in the NBA. I know I think he makes so much money. He's probably on a rookie contract still, and I could be wrong. Where he's making like, you know, seven to eight million dollars a year. And you gotta take the tax, and they about to take half of that. So let's say he's down to like four million dollars. That's still a lot of money. And then you gotta pay his agents a percentage. He probably gotta pay other type of percentages. So let's say he's probably taking home maybe three million dollars per year. Do you really think the judge is granting Brittany Renner? $2.4 million a year because that is what $200,000 times 12 months is. Y'all really think that they're giving her $2.4 million a year. They're giving her a kicker contract for having a baby. 
When we see people like Future paying twenty five hundred dollars, we see people like Rick Ross paying. What was Rick Ross shit that just came out recently? Like ten thousand dollars, something like that. Y'all really think they they making him pay two hundred thousand? Like, come on. Like, stop now. Then the predatory things came up. She's she's at the games at Kentucky games and shit like that. She says on the podcast that he invited her to come to the game. Obviously, it's Brittany Renner. She's beautiful, right? Why would you why would you not, you know, invite her to your game? Especially if you have the the clout to get her there. If you're a good Kentucky I didn't I didn't really hear PJ Washington too much, but I'm not a college basketball aficionado. So maybe he was cold enough to get into the game. And I'm not saying that she wasn't looking at him as a lick, but if it was, it was a very, you know, it was a long play to get there. Because Instagram can be deceiving, as we all know. But it looked like there was actually in a lovey-dovey relationship. And if we're going to be honest, people break up, get divorced all the time. So why is this no different? It's because the internet made PJ, PJ Washington the victim. They made him the, 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 the sad, pathetic, millionaire, young NBA player. She took advantage of him. She's 28 and he's 22. He's so young. It's like... Come on, dog. You're a 22 millionaire, and you do that, you wanted to do that. You wanted to get her pregnant. Because she made a good point in the video. Academics was like, uh, well, how do we know he didn't want it? He was like, She was like, he literally named the baby after him. You tell me. Anybody out there, let me know. Let me know if I'm tripping. What guy has a baby that he does not want and names him after himself? A baby you don't want, who does it? You name a kid after you because you're like, that's my kid. I want that kid. So obviously, he wanted to have that child. He didn't, she didn't get trapped. He wanted to have the child. So I'm play a clip from it, two clips really, and uh, let me know what you guys two think. Two years old. And here we are. I told you I'm okay to wait. I'm not in a rush. I'm a very spiritual person. I trust in divine timing. You're I know trying anything. to get married to him? No, I'm not trying to. I just well, told no, where you, you, where you. I was. I thought that was my guy. And, like, I don't know why it's so hard for y'all to believe that. And, like, in my mind, it's, it's crazy to me that the age gap between Jay-Z and Beyonce, crickets. The age gap between Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan, age, it's, it's crickets. So, <clears throat> I feel what she's saying. Because, um, you know, there is age gap between, I think she said Michael B. Jordan's 34, Lori Harvey's 24. But obviously Lori Harvey hasn't gotten pregnant yet. But there's always going to be double standards. I understand there's always going to be double standards, right? Uh, recently, even Diddy and Young Miami. Young Miami's probably like 20, what, 25? And Diddy's like 50. There's a big 25-year. He might even be older than 50. 25-year age gap between those guys. And really not a peak because... A lot of us guys, we look at it like, shit, if I'm a 50-year-old millionaire damn near billionaire, I want to give me a little young, you know, a little young piece of ass as well. So we don't really look at nothing wrong with that. And I don't even think people genuinely feel like, feel a way about Brittany Renner. I think it's one of the situations that, well, I kind of think the internet is a dangerous place as well for narratives because people don't really give a fuck. They just saying whatever is going to get them retweets, right? And then when you say something they want to get you retweets and you get the retweets, other people look at that as, oh, that's the real opinion. That's what's really going on. But a lot of us are running. I, I forgot what I was looking at. It was something about why um, anonymous social media is so bad. Like why you see like people with weird ass names and no picture, they just go off and say whatever they want to say, right? Because a lot of people just be saying shit. They don't really believe that shit. Like, you can't really sit somebody down and be like, hey, do you honestly really believe that, what you're saying on this tweet? They're probably like, no, I'm just, tro everybody's just trolling. But the troll opinion on the internet becomes the what people presume as the real opinion and what's really going on and what's really the feeling from a lot of people, you know, in the world. So then there was this clip where he was bringing up um, her being a side chick. Everybody had you as a side chick. I'm going to be honest. I thought everybody else had you as a side chick, and he, listen, in a, in, a, in, a, in a male community, we know the chase that's like, yo, that side chick pussy. And then and we so know, we know the dumbass nigga who wipes up the side chick. And we're like. So what makes me a what? side chick? Because the, what, I'm beautiful? And no, because what? the one who everybody fucks but doesn't wife, that's the side chick. Sorry. 
So who have I who who have I been side chicks? You wrote with? a fucking book. Who have I been a side? But I was never a side chick. Well, when you write well, a book about having not casual any of the sex, I wrote about. and by I've the way, not before. one of them claimed you. We assume you you know why men don't claim women because we have our real girl that we don't want to tell about you. So, and it don't get me twisted. I can see why a lot of people don't side with a person like Brittany Renner because. You do it to yourself. If you write a book about fucking nigga, multiple guys, multiple famous people, they was insinuating, obviously, Colin Kaepernick, Trey Song, like obviously the stars of the stars, right? Um, nobody's going to feel sorry for you whenever people think you're a hoe or people think you're some mischievous gold digger. Like, you cannot be surprised when it happens, right? You just, you just can't be surprised. So it do bring up – it do make me think about a bunch of different people, though. They're like like – when it's the reverse, right? Like when you see, um, cause it just, I was thinking about, okay, what other girls that are like in that realm, like IG model, pretty chicks that we know for being pretty, what other ones of them have gotten pregnant by celebrities? Right. And it made me think of Lyra Galore. She gets pregnant by QC, uh, not QC, Q uh, P from QC. You don't really know conversation about, uh, her being trapped because obviously, it's the reverse. He's obviously older than she is. And, you know, she's not really, I don't know their, their situation as far as um, who's getting money, like who's, how much she's getting, but it's probably nothing to where it really harms somebody like P and people don't look at P like a sucker. And if you look at uh Lear Galore's track history, um, obviously Drake has talked about her a lot. Maybe she was affiliated with Drake in some sort of type of fashion. I mean, I've seen them go on dates. I'm sure if Drake's taking you on a date, he's probably, you know, hitting it at the end of the night. Obviously she was engaged to Rick Ross while Ross was on house arrest. And then she goes and get pregnant by P, but not really a P by her, but for Brittany Renner, she kind of does it to herself, right? She does it to herself. When she posted up the hide your sons, obviously she's trolling and, and leaning into the the social media narrative around her. But when you do that, you got to know that the R. Shelley, I never heard nobody say R. Shelley, but you got to know that those things are going to be brought up. Those things are going to be talked about because you're leaning into it. And a lot of people really are brainwashed and still think that you bagged him and ran off with a $200,000 a month check. They just believe it. So you really can't be surprised when you see people doing that because like i said a lot of people on the internet either are playing about how they really feel and just kind of going with whatever's popular to get retweets or they just believe whatever they see on the internet they believe whatever they see i literally seen a report today right it was a bunch of QAnon people that went to dallas because they think and they have a bunch of t-shirts that say it trump kennedy they think that jfk who got killed in dallas in 1963 is going to resurrect from the dead and anoint Trump, the next president, and the king of kings. You can't play around in there. You don't know what feeble minds you got out there that are really believe the shit that's going on in there. So she's got to do, keep doing what she's doing. I mean, I don't know what she does. Um, Instagram or whatever. Uh, she got a book out. Um, she got that. Um, and do, do, keep doing what you're doing, right? The shit went viral, obviously, because... Nobody's really heard her speak about it, um, especially with like a platform like academics. It goes viral and everybody's talking about it. But I don't really believe the whole narrative of she used him to get a come up, to get a bag, because let's be honest, she's Brittany Renner. She could have probably trapped a way more stable hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, she could have really got a lick from somebody. Not to say P.J. Washington ain't got bread, but is he any good? Is P.J. Washington good? I don't know. Let, tell me if he's good. Because, like, maybe she got trapped by, like, a, a LaMelo Ball type of dude. Oh, she's going to be good. Trapped by, like, a Drake type. Obviously, Drake, baby mama, she's good. But also, we got the niggas got to hold account. Like, Drake nothing in this, this lady. Right, out of all the women that he could have nutted in, the Rihanna's, the Serena's, the this, the that, the J-Lo's, not to, not to disparage his baby mother. She's not like a, a hideous woman or anything, but she wouldn't be the woman that people would deem to be like a Drake, um, whatever, baby mama or wife, future potential, right? This is the same way 
Nicki Minaj, people look at her with a shit face because, like, why is she with this regular guy when you would think Nicki Minaj would be with, you know, whoever the fuck you think she would be with, right? So it makes sense for Brittany Renner to get with someone like P.J. Washington, a low-key, still, you know, an athlete, got money, still in the limelight, not really too much, but he's still famous, really low-key. It would make sense for her to be with somebody like that because, to be honest, which of the mega stars are going to be with Britney based off of what we know of her history, right? Like, James Harden ain't going to fuck with her. He might fuck her, but he ain't going to fuck with her just because a lot of guys don't want that, you know, be in the same room with niggas that fucked your girl. You know, maybe P.J. Washington doesn't know everybody in the league yet that's hit his girl, but, you know, and he's young, so he's probably like, that's Britney Renner. Like, if I was 20... And and this is where I guess where I'm going to. It makes it, it still makes it seem like he she used him. But I'm speaking from a mind of a 20 year old who's getting on, like that's Brittany Renner. Just same like I said, if Bernie's Burgos when I was 20 wanted to holler, it's like fuck that's Bernice or Lyra Galore or Mercedes. Like any of these people that are like famous that look good, you would run and flock to be with them. And you might wife them just off the fact that damn, I actually got her. I'm not letting her go. I've been looking at her pictures since I was 13, 16, however old you were. And she's a little bit older than you. So let's just say, um, let's say Lear Galore. I mean, Lear Galore the same age. I don't even know how old she is. But let's say Bernice Burgos, right? Bernice Burgos, 40. I'm 27. So I've been looking at Bernice Burgos since I was 13. That was 14 years ago. 14 years ago, let's say she's 26. I've been looking at her. I get on. I get big. Oh, shit, I'm fucking with that. Oh, damn, she fuck with me. I might just lock her down because I've been, you know, eyeing her for however long. That's just an example. Obviously, see, I'm married. You know, today's my anniversary, actually. That's why this episode is going to be really short. But, you know, that's my take on the entire thing. I think she just get unfairly attacked because a lot of people do believe the rumors that are swirling about her and a girl who is open about her sexual history will never really get too much respect on the Internet. That's all. She just won't. If she was like Aisha Curry, never, like, they'll let a regular girl fuck a nigga and leave him, and it'll be like, well, you know, hey, he shouldn't have nutted in her, but when it's somebody we know and she's been sleeping with a bunch of people, then that's when, you know, you get that, uh, you get that backlash. So anyways, um, the baby has finally been forgiven for his transgressions against the LGBT community. They've, they have um, approved of him being on the Rolling Loud Festival, so let's just take a look at that. The baby forgiven by LGBTQ organization for rolling loud comments. The baby is no longer canceled, having sufficiently redeemed himself for his controversial comments at Rolling Loud Miami in July, according to one LGBTQ organization. Anyway, Gwendolyn D. Clemens, CEO of Relationship Unleashed, told TMZ on Tuesday, November 2nd, that she and her cause have forgiven the North Carolina rapper for his homophobic and sexist remarks, believing he's come a long way since then. Clemens also gave the baby a recent return to Rolling Loud her blessing, along with any future cards he's got lined up for. I do not like the, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't like the, I don't know what the fuck word I'm looking for. I just don't like how that sounds. He's got my blessing. Gwendolyn, sweetie, whether you said he got a blessing or not, they was going to bring him back on them stages because the fans don't give a fuck what you got to say. No disrespect. They're going to fuck what you got to say, your organization got to say. Eventually, they're going to circle back around and go with him because the fan base wants him. Not because you don't want him, because the fan base. That's like a sense of entitlement. I give them my blessing. Um, uh, in any other concerts, he has our blessing. Like, if you didn't give him his blessing, 50 Cent, do you think 50 Cent checked in with Gwendolyn and said, hey, um, are you going to give the baby his blessing? Are you going to give the, the blessing for the baby to come out? Do you think the CEO of Rolling Loud went to Gwendolyn? Come on, one LGBTQ organization. Come on, give me a blessing. Give me a blessing. Please, please, please. No. That just feels like a sense of entitlement. Like, I have to check in with you. For, it's not like some street shit. You know how they like, oh, if you go to L.A., you got to check in or some shit like that. I got to check in with y'all. I've done the proper um, community service, the research, the activist hours. Then I have permission from the community to then go out and perform once again. So, the blaming on baby hitmaker was brought out as especially because during 50 Cent's headline set on Rolling Loud last Thursday. Um, Relationship Unleashed was one of the numerous LGBTQ and HIV awareness organizations the baby met with following the widespread backlash to his Rolling Loud rant. We saw him drop from several festivals and endorsements. Gwendolyn Simmons says they educated, they educated the baby about HIV AIDS, including how the spectrum of conditions affect people 
in native Charlotte, North Carolina. According to her, the information resonated with the 29-year-old rapper. Clemens believes the baby initial comments from a place of ignorance, but he now has a newfound perspective on such issues. Relationship Unlimited aren't the only name to support the baby. Uh, aren't the only name to support him. Uh, 50 Cent, T.I., Boosie, Italy, Chopper, Kanye West, who featured the NC Native, have also sided with him. But they, I don't know why you're comparing, like, the LGBT organization sided, and also they did, they was fucking with him before anybody else gave some sort of approval about him. So, and this is why, like, do we really think the baby gives a fuck about HIV awareness now? Like, come on, no. It's PR. I get it. I'll do it too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love everybody. I apologize. Um, I'm going to donate $50,000 to every organization I met up with. We need to fight to change HIV culture. Right. And I'm going to get back to making the money. The upper, I'm not going to read all that. We know why he got, uh, we know he got in trouble. So anyways, another part of the article, one figure relationship unleashed aren't so quick to forgive. However, is Dave Chappelle, the evil right wing adjacent, Dave Chappelle. That is what they were saying about Dave Chappelle. They're saying he's like right wing propagandist now. He's right wing adjacent now because of what he did. Gwendolyn Clemens describes a comedian's recent Netflix special, The Closer, as hate speech disguised as comedy and claims he's shown no empathy, remorse, and accusations of being transphobic. So, the baby perform at will. Um, Dave, we still condemn you. You don't have our approval. But you know what's going to happen? Dave Chappelle doesn't need the approval. Same way the baby didn't need the approval. I apologize, and I move on. I say I didn't mean to offend, if you're still offended, and I move on. That's how the world works. Like I say all the time, I never want to disrespect nobody. I never want to like demean anybody's however they want to live their life. If I do, I'll apologize, but I'm not going to grovel. And let me tell you, the only way you do grovel is if your fan base leave. If your fan base leave you, grovel till you got to grovel. Because if you don't got your fan base, you don't got shit. But as long as you have your core fan base still, and you still feel remorseful for offending people, you apologize. But like Dave Chappelle said, I'm not going to bend my knee. Like if I, if I feel like I did you wrong, I apologize. I'm sorry. But I'm not going to bend the knee and beg and plead for you to forgive me. Oh, no, guys. I'm not, not going to do that. You know why? Because Dave Chappelle has 10 dates coming up. To, to show his Netflix documentary and to do comedy still. And you know what's going to be there? Sold out crowds. People are still going to be there. He still has audience. It does not affect him in any which way, shape, or form. Now, you can either, like you do with the baby, come let's meet in the middle and either, you know, give me some type of information or whatever, whatever you want to do. But if you ain't going to do that, I'm not groveling for anybody's acceptance as long as your fans are still rocking with you. Same thing with Boosie. Like, look at this. Boosie says shit on the internet that people would think that's like like one of the seven deadly sins of cancel culture. He called Lil Nas X the F word, which we've seen if anybody done that of recently gets destroyed. People who did it 10 years ago, people was just using it just to use it, get destroyed. Nothing happened to him. You know why nothing happened to Boosie? Because Boosie's fan base does not live in that world. And also, the people who run the cancel culture, whoever picks and chooses who to go after, know that, eh, Boosie to them is a small fish. Ain't nothing really we can do to drum this up for media attention. There's nothing we can really take away massively from him that, you know, will affect him. Dave Chappelle, he's a big star. I didn't even know Dave Chappelle was, quote, unquote, getting canceled until he did his little sit-down thing where he, he stated that I had a bunch of movie studios that wanted my documentary. After this, people stopped calling. Obviously, we'll see what happened to the baby. Festival, at the festival, at the festival, at the festival, at the festival. Dropped them. But I'm sure next year, when we stop dropping hits again, they're all going to circle back around. Now, does the baby do those festivals after they dropped them? Who knows? If the bag's big enough, I would assume that he does. So, speaking of Boosie, Boosie put out a clip where he was like, he got like eight to nine people running up to him saying, Boosie, you the voice. You speaking a real, you speaking for the, for the people with no voice. Which is like another reason why I say that he really can't be canceled because the people that fuck with Boosie don't really give a fuck about how you feel about whatever you feel. Like calling Lil Nas X the F word, like they don't care. They might feel that same way or, or more, right? They might. I don't know if they all do, but they might. So he put out that clip and then this morning on The Breakfast Club, they brought on T.S. Madison, who is a transgender um, 
actress now. She used to do commentary. She had a show with uh, Kia. It was like Queen's Court or something like that. And this is what uh, they talked about. A little clip of what they talked about. They heard about a lot. But this is a little clip of what they talked about on the Breakfast Club this morning. <laughs> to learn instead of just being so quick to say oh he's transphobic because she's transphobic uh well you know move forward because there is there is transphobia and homophobia that's really rampant out yes, there, there is. rampant and it's rampant out there because you know they people are people's spaces are are, are being uh felt like it's threatened like boosie what is you bother with uh Lil Nas X for what's the problem Mm -hmm. My thing is when when he said that uh, uh, he's a detriment like to kids and and we need to worry about the kids and all this stuff. But I'm like, but you the same man had a over this woman perform a fellatio on your young son, and you didn't see anything wrong with that. But you you it's making it make sense to me. I was so confused about the situation. Like who 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 kids really need to. So she went on just like, whose kids really need protecting? Your kids. So I said that one, and when I had my um, disagreements with Boosie on the Lil Nas X thing, like I get where you're coming from because obviously if you think that Lil Nas X's fan base is, or his music was tailored to children and we got devil imagery and this and that, I can see how you are um, against, you know, someone like Lil Nas X, right? And they brought up rappers. They said, well, if you're a rapper and you talk about drugs and this and that, you will have no moral high ground. Now, I get that on a on a, a large scale because obviously, you know, I can't be naive and act like kids do not consume this music. I always just felt like, you know, well, they're not targeting kids for their audience. I don't think Boosie's targeting kids for his audience, but obviously kids do get tuned in to this music because I live, I live there on my Instagram, right? Just somebody I follow. They're, they're a teacher, and they um, posted a kid, and they were like, do you know who – Apollo is right. What what is Apollo the god of or something like that? And he said, Apollo is King Vaughn's producer. And I'm like, okay, so there's second graders out here consuming King Vaughn music. We see eight year olds, seven year olds having NBA Young Boy parties. So these kids are consuming the street shit at an early age and really taking it in. Not just not just they hear their mom or daddy playing and they they rock and they moving around like. They know the shit word for word. They do the same lingo. They do the same sign. Like these kids are actually delving into this shit at a very early age. And I always say, and we had a conversation about this in Hampshire and sure, I do think if you want to do comparative, what do you think is more dangerous? Like people say the I don't the quote unquote gay agenda versus the street agenda in hip hop. I think overwhelmingly, ten out of ten, the street agenda uh, has more of a detrimental effect on children in the community than people being gay. Like, if you just ask me, do you want your son to be um, influenced to be a street guy or be gay? And you look at the consequences of both as far as, like, harm to society, harm to themselves, I would say gay 10 out of 10. Like, I'd, like, I'd rather you not partake in the street life whatsoever at all. If you gay when you're like, whatever, you got a boyfriend, you like 18, 19, whatever, I don't give a fuck, whatever. It's not my life. I said, I said, it's not my life. I don't feel strong. I talk about when I mean uh me and one of my followers, uh, Vile Rap Daily, uh, he, had, he had a lot of things to say about gay people. We had a discussion about it. And I was like, I don't I don't really care. Like, it doesn't have nothing directly. It doesn't directly affect me, what gay people do. I don't care. Like, you can't turn me gay. Like, you can't turn me on. Like, if a gay guy come in and say, hey, you look good, big guy, it ain't going to make me move. It ain't going to make Fuck, does he want to have sex? Like, I'm not going to think about it. So... The one thing, though, about T.S. Madison is like, but you got to give people room to grow. I never want to be that person that's like, you know, um, well, you back in the day, you did this, you did that. It's like, yeah. Like, T.S. Madison was literally like, Vine was a big app when I was younger. Like, I was a kid when Vine was big. Or at least like a high schooler. The first time I ever seen T.S. Madison was because I seen her run around with her ass out, turn around and flip her dick up and down like, that scene and you got served, you know, they like go, whatever. That's what she was doing on Vine. A predominantly child app. It wasn't censored. It didn't say caution, warning, don't watch this. If you're, it didn't say none of that. So you was on a kid's app when you was younger. 
like flapping your dick around. So like you can't even really say it's like it's hard because like okay you can't really say nothing about it either because when you were at a certain point you was on a kids app doing what you was doing, right? Um, but that's what I got, man. It's just like short day. Like I said, today's my anniversary. We're about to go uh, do some things, you know, love life, love each other. But make sure you subscribe and unsubscribe right now, man. Make sure you uh, turn on my post notification every single time that I post. Also, make sure you follow me on social media as well. Let me know what you think. Send me stories. Any, if any Anything you think I, that you want to see me discuss, send it to my social medias. Let me put that up there again just so you have it. Follow me on my social medias. Also, go follow me on uh, SoundCloud, Spotify, and iTunes. Just search up the different show, and all those will be there for you to listen to the audio only versions. That's all I got for you guys. I really appreciate you guys for watching, listening, streaming. Go check out, if you haven't checked it out, go check out the Absolute Insure Episode 100. We did an R&B Top 100 special, and you will be, well, I don't think you'll be surprised, because I think it's a great song. Who wins that 100-song R&B bracket? Go check it out. Appreciate you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.